Hello, I am Yaming Lee, a sophomore at Calvin University, and I will be presenting the first of the three talks about our research on the evolution of contact binary stars. Here, we are going to discuss how we follow the structure of the primary star with MESA. A contact binary star is a system that contains two component stars orbiting so close that they share the same atmosphere. As you can see in the picture, at value negative two, both stars have their own individual space. At value one, there's a larger surrounding space called a common envelope, but we will discuss it in the next talk. This intersection at the corner on the left is the Lagrangian point L2, where material spills out because the mass transfer rate is too fast that the smaller space is unable to contain it. Finally, the zero fill out factor, called the Roche lobe, the red line as you can see, is what we are trying to get our model to achieve because they are greatly in contact to the point of merging. About 1% of stars with masses like our sun are in a contact binary simply because they are common and have a longer lifespan. However, when stars form, they are enormous in size. Over time, they shrink and hence are unable to form as contacts. This ultimately fails to line up with what we are researching. We needed a theory of how these non-contact stars reach contact, how long they last and how they die. We have developed a model of the birth, life, and death of binary stars over the years. This summer, we focused on the life of the contact binary star from its birth until the Darwin instability. To achieve our results, we calculated the structure of the primary star and how it evolves over time through nuclear burning. We made sure to keep the binary system conserved in total mass and angular momentum. Our fundamental assumption is that the second star is fixed by the changes of the primary star, meaning the primary star is the leading element between the two in the merging process. While a star in the system is expanding, the feedback mechanism lets the other star know when to transfer less or more mass. This is to be sure that the stars are always in contact and to keep them in the Roche lobe size. The image on the left is the contact binary system at 1 billion years, while the one on the right is the contact binary system at 7.4 billion years, where the primary star has grown slightly bigger. We have scaled them so that they can be distinguishable. To compute the structure of the primary star, we use MESA, Modules for Experiments in Stellar Astrophysics. MESA is a powerful Fortran code for computing single star evolution by using nuclear power generation, hydrostatic, and thermal equilibrium. MESA is able to calculate the exact interior structure of a star. This interface includes calculations for rotating stars and stars with increasing mass over time. However, our obstacle was that the rotation and mass transfer rate at each run is fixed. We approach this problem by running the program at a series of time steps, each with their own mass transfer and rotation rate. We input a new mass transfer rate at each run, calculated by adjusting the former mass transfer rate to get a value consistent with the law of mass and angular momentum conservation. By using MESA, we track the single star evolution. We followed one star as it grows in mass and evolves in time, and plotted their process as a function of time. In our previous calculations, we did time steps, yet we did not know the time span for the life of the binary system. These are the graphs with m dot, which is mass transfer rate versus time on the left, and mass versus time on the right. If you look at the graph on the left, for a long time, the M dot is fairly constant. That is when the star is burning hydrogen in its core. Suddenly, the pace picks up when the core hydrogen is exhausted, and what is left is helium. So, the star proceeded to hydrogen shell burning and then expanded. The mass transfer rate follows suit and jumps up. These wiggles you see when the M dots are going up are all related to the real evolution of the star when they are consuming hydrogen. In the graph mass versus time, we know how much mass changes over time. It was gradual at first, then the mass transfer rate increases. By looking at the time axis, we know how long this process is going to last and interpret the life of that primary star, ultimately the contact binary system. The interpretation will be explained in the next two talks by Annika Avery and Lauren Henderson. That is all. Thank you for listening to my presentation.